Okay, if I'm going to talk to you about the vestibular system, which is a really cool system that does a lot of really cool things, I don't want to give you a wall of textbooks or a mountain of work to do before you're going to get anything to do. We don't just want to give you papers and papers and books and books, mostly because that is just not going to orient you. So what I want to do is orient you to where we're going to go. And that means that you're going to be able to place all of that granular science in context. If for years I was just exhausted and sad, <laughs> tears, because it was, a, it was a lot of work and it was worth it. But what I want to do is shortcut you so you can just do the things that you need to do to understand the system straight away. Okay, if I can save a bunch of people a few years of frustration, I'm really happy. So let's talk briefly about the things that we're going to cover. But first of all, I'll put that inside a bit of a why. All the vestibular system actually is, is inside a bony head, it's three canals and a little chamber that has two set types of receptors. And all it really cares about is telling you, one, which way's up, and two, am I moving? And that's it. And if you break the third one down, the second one down into two, it's am I moving uh, rotationally? which is essentially spin, or am I moving in a straight line? And that's pretty much it. So it's got two receptors that are actually specialized for that, but that's the only information that goes into the brain. So the two different receptors are essentially, we'll talk about them later, but you can see straight away that there's things that you can look at straight away in your everyday practice, which is what we're clinicians, that, that's what we're here for. And that's the straightness of the spine, which is essentially controlled by muscles that are controlled by outputs of the vestibular system, among other things. But we can also look at um, posture, because often this isn't quite right. Or well, your head tilt, if your eyes are there, are not exactly where they should be. Your nose might be a little bit out of whack, or your ears might twist the other way, or you might tilt. Often, but not always, that's because your vestibular system is telling the muscles that control these things in your eyes your neck, and your spine, and your, your body, of course, what to sit, where to sit, what to do. And this gives you all your angulations, tone, and position. And that's what we're looking at every single day as clinicians. So that's why it's important. Well, that's the first reason it's important. Okay, so let's talk about receptors. So basically, we have a, a canal. But if you look at just one subjection of it, it's pretty much a specialized set of hair cells in jelly. And when it moves one direction or the other, sorry, one direction or the other, what you have is these hair cells will move and deflect. So they look like this. Now, if you have fluid that goes this direction, you're gonna get them looking more like this. And that's going to increase the signal. So sort of your normal signal is this, increased signal will be this. You go another one down, go back the other way, and you simply decrease the signal. And that signal goes into the brain and pretty much gives you an idea of, are you rotating? And how fast, or how much? The second type of signal is, am I moving in a straight line? And this one's also tilt because the very nature of this receptor means that if you move it one direction or if you move it one direction or the other, what you'll find is it'll do the same thing as if it's tilting. And that's where you have something that's called the tilt translation problem. All that means for later is that the brain fixes that, or the brain and brainstem needs more information. And that's part of the reason that you need eyes and body as well. So let's have a look at those receptors. So like the other ones, here are the other ones like this, they were just hair cells. These ones are also hair cells, but they're all about the same size. They have a little mattress on them. So when you move, if you tilt this mattress, so you tilt that surface, what you'll find is those hair cells will deflect. 
So what we're looking at here is that little angle there. So that little angle changes, okay? This, the same thing when you move. If we move this that way, what you would get is this little deflection here. Same thing, that's the angle changing. So that's going to change the signal that goes into the brain. So that essentially gives you straight line. But it also gives you tilt. And tilt is essentially another way of working out more about where is up. So the apparatus these things live in. If that's your head, that's your nose. They basically live in what's called an orthogonal plane. So you have round, round, and round. That's basically like the edges of a cube. Now, you can move your head in any direction and you'll get movement through these fluid-filled uh, tubes. And those are basically connected down to your, or into your brainstem, and then via your brainstem with other information from your eyes, um, your brain, and your body into the vestibular nuclei. So when you read about the neurophysiology, the, th the reading you need to do is to read more about the apparatus, which also has a little um, vestibule in here, which has the otoliths. You need to read about both of those. You need to read about the nerves. You need to read about the way they work, which is the neurophysiology. You need to read about the anatomy of the brainstem. A little bit later on, you need to read about how all those things go wrong. So that's your pathologies. That might be a vascular pathology, infection. It's damage to all of the parts along here, whether it's the, the nerve, um, the actual canal, whether it's grit in the canal that gets caught on the receptor, which is your BPPV or your uh, oh, other things where they can get stuck. Um, you can have little windows in here that blow out. Uh, you can have dihiscence where this thing doesn't work. So you need to read about those. That's your pathologies. I'm not going to cover a lot of those in the workshop because I'm going to assume that you've read about them already. The reason that is, it's not because they're not important. It's because they, they are very important. But what we find is that most people who we see with vestibular problems are really presenting to us with things like neck problems. If we go back here, they're, they're presenting with... Um, neck muscles that just won't go, won't go away, or stubborn head tilts, or we'll go later into more of the what the, vesti what the vestibular system controls, but it's not just dizziness, it's not just these hard pathologies that you can find, because you can see a lot of these, if you look carefully enough, you can see a vascular insult in the brainstem on an MRI. You can see on a CT or an MRI, some of the problems in here. These are pathologies you can see and they make sense and you can test them and they're, they're a lot easier to see. What we see a lot of is that these things are intact but the circuitry is not working well. So either there's a problem in the brain, a problem in the eye movement integration, a problem in the cerebellum which controls this and that's more what we're looking at. That's what a lot of problems are that come into the offices that have been through these workups. So we like to target in our workshops ways to address things that you won't find in the literature so readily, the practical things you can do.